Hello Daz Studio patrons, this is Not From This World and I want to welcome you to my tutorial series. Now today I want to talk a little bit more about a couple things that I've mentioned in the past. The first thing is going to be backgrounds. Uh, there's some interesting things about backgrounds that I want to add to what I've talked about previously. And then the second thing is going to be screens and adding an image to a screen. I've done a couple videos where I mentioned this, but there is a big update that I want to mention here at the end that deals with adding screens that really makes things a lot easier. Okay, so first of all, I've got my Milica here um, set up in a blank scene. So I just have my girl. And if you set up a character or a set of props or something like that, you'll notice that there is nothing in the background. And so we just have kind of our Daz grid, and then there is nothing here. If we do an iRay preview, we will get a preview with kind of this gray background. That's because we've done nothing to the background. Also, if we render, we're going to get an image that has all of these little gray boxes. Now, this is going to be important for a couple of things. First of all, what those boxes represent is transparency. So we can take our image and put it into a different program and then manipulate it using transparency. Now, the only way that we can do this, however, is if we have our render settings set to a PNG. So if you go into your render settings here under image name, don't worry about the name. I never name things in Daz Studio. I always name them on my computer. But it tells you what format it's going to render the image at. So I have it set for a .png. You can do JPEGs if you want. Um, I always save things that I'm creating as a JPEG, but I always render them as a PNG. And what the difference between the two is that a PNG allows for transparency. And honestly, for a long time, I wasn't even sure what that even meant. I never used it. But over the last you know, course of several years, I've gotten to use PNGs and transparency a lot more. If you save your image as a JPEG, you won't get any transparency. So let me show you what I mean by this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to save this render that I just made of Milica. She's blonde today, which is kind of neat. She kind of went with the blonde look. So I'm going to save this and then we're going to put our images into GIMP and I'm going to show you what transparency can do. Okay, so what I have done is I've opened up my render with GIMP. And if you notice, when I opened it up, all of these boxes are going to be present because this is a PNG and everything behind her is transparent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open up just like a background that I found on the internet and we're going to add that to GIMP as well. So I was just surfing around really quick and I saw this beach picture. And I thought this would be a good demo, just a simple demo to show you how we can use transparency with background. So I'm going to open this picture up with GIMP. And now we have Milica and we've got the background. Go to my Milica character and I'm going to use my lasso tool and I'm just going to select around her. So I can copy Milica. So I'm just going to hit Control C. I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to take, go back to my image, and I'm just going to hit Control V. And I've got 
Milica added into the scene. Now I'm going to hit Shift S with Milica still highlighted, still selected. This is going to allow me to resize her, so now I can make her bigger and hit scale. Now she's scaled and I can still adjust her if I need to. And then when I'm ready to move her, I just go back to my lasso and see I can move her kind of around. Then I just double click and Milica is now in this scene with the background. So if you have backgrounds that you like that you want to add a character to, you can do this quite easily. Now there's obviously some big drawbacks to this, like um, you won't have shadowing and that kind of thing unless you select it, but this can make renders really simple. If you've got a nice background of a city or a landscape that you just want to add a person to, this works really well. So don't forget to save as a PNG. Okay, now back in Daz Studio, I still don't have any background. So I have shown you this in the past, how we can add a background to our scene. And that is by going to environment and then selecting background. Now, what I usually do is I usually just make it kind of gray and that way I can work on it. But if we do this, you're not going to have that transparency in the background. See, if I render this, since I chose a background color, we're not going to have those little boxes. So now we have a background. And obviously we can go in, we can select under background, we can select a little arrow, and then we can browse and we can add any background we want to our scene. What's really cool about this is we can also rotate it. So we can rotate the background left or right 90 degrees or 180 degrees. And that kind of flip flops it, things like that. I do this occasionally with random backgrounds that, um, you know, have something like a starscape or clouds just to mix things up so it doesn't look the same in each render that I do. We can also make the background invisible as we render. So if you add a background, and I've got to be honest with you, I don't know how to undo this. I can make it different colors. I can make different pictures for my background. But once we do that, I don't know of a way to get rid of that. So if you want to go back and just render Milica by herself without this background, we're kind of screwed over because we can't just get rid of anything. If I play with this and try and set everything um, back, there is no default back to the absence of a background once you provide one. But what we can do is we can go to visible and render and turn that off. When that's turned off, when we render, there is no background again. So now, thank goodness, we are back to our original transparent Milica without any background. So that works really well if you need to change up your background. All right, so what I've done is I've added my blonde Milica to kind of a sci-fi scene. And I have the same issue going on where I have no background. Now I have used this scene for a sci-fi comic that I did. So I added a screen to it simply by just going to my box under background, going to browse. And what I added was just a starscape. So it's down here at the bottom. So I just found these off the internet and I just added a starscape to the background. So it looked like Milica was just kind of inside a space dome where she is doing an experiment. So that's pretty easy. And if you notice my uh, visibility is on. So if I do render this, we're going to render the background and everything else. All right, so you can see that is working really well. And this is where our flip 
or rotation goes really well. So now I can flip and we get different stars in different areas. So that's kind of cool. You can uh, kind of play with that background and, and make it your own. So backgrounds are really cool to play around with and I suggest that you just kind of play with it. Go to GIMP, change a few things, try and save things as PNGs and then take it into GIMP, see what you can do. Now I do want to make one update and I have an entire video where I talk about adding an image to a screen and it works really well. However, I do need to update a little bit on this because in Daz Studio 4.22, there is an update that kind of changes the last few things I said in my tutorial about screens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my screen and we're going to add a image to it, just like we've done before. So in this big screen, I have to go to light. I just go uh, to my surface tab, large monitor, and then it's the light where it actually puts it on the screen for this particular prop. So I'm going to go to diffuse and then to my little arrow here and let's browse. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add something that I've had before so I can show you the difference here. Okay, so I have this screen that's got like a scoreboard on it. So if I open this screen up, you can see that we have this nice score. So in one of my videos, kind of a long story, I'm playing a game and these two girls are competing against each other and this is their score. Well, if I want to change this, the way that it has been done in the past is that I would have to change and resave every screen. So when I wanted the, the score to change, I had to make a new image and save it as something different. So you can see I, I saved it as screen 33, 34, 35, and so on. Well, our update will get rid of this problem. So see, I have the score in my scene as 24 to 19. So now look, I can take this 24 to 19, I can open it up in Microsoft Paint, which is where I created this, and I can go in here and I can change the score. So let's just take this 24, let's get rid of the four, I'm gonna play a little bit with paint. It's kind of funny, I use Microsoft Paint a lot more than you would think for everything I do. So let's make that 24 into a 29. So now I can just change my number to 29. And as soon as I hit save, it's going to change it now, finally in Daz Studio. And you'll see this 24 in my image turn to a 29. This is really pretty cool. So I'm just going to hit save. And now when I go to Daz, it changes to a 29. Oh, thank you, Daz, for this update. I actually just stumbled on this on pure accident. I was doing my normal routine of saving every score, and um, I made a mistake once and just noticed, oh my gosh, it's changing now like it should. Now you don't need to make an entire file folder of stupid screens that you want to change for your comic. So this is a wonderful update with Daz 4.22. And uh, despite all the trouble we've had, you know, with the hair and um, troubleshooting and, and things going wrong with 4.22, this is one of the good things. So I do have a nice good thing to um, report for Daz Studio 4.22. All right, I think I'll just set this up for a quick render so I can make a thumbnail for my video here. So let's set this up. I do want to thank you for your patronage. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'd love to hear some comments. Your ideas really help me for future videos, and so I really appreciate that. 
Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day.